I am going to read a tract written by my husband, Ishmael and Isaac, the two sons of Abraham. The following is the story and history of Ishmael and Isaac. They were half-brothers, having the same father, whose name was Abraham. Ishmael was the firstborn son of Abraham, but he was denied his birthright or inheritance after the birth of Isaac. A birthright was a very important thing if your father was a rich man, and Abraham was an exceedingly rich man. See Genesis 24, 35. Isaac inherited all that his father had and more than he had in his possession, for he inherited the promise to possess the land of Israel and also that out of his seed would be born the Savior of the whole world, Jesus the Messiah. You can understand why Ishmael would become very angry at such a thing ha that such a thing happened to him, especially since he was a very unstable man. The Bible says nothing about this, but Ishmael has not given up his claim to his birthright to inherit the promised land, the holy land, and to provide a savior for the whole world. I hope that I can keep your interest as this is an exciting story, but it is fairly long with a lot of scriptures being quoted. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten, ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Genesis 16, 1 through 12. The verse I would like to draw your attention to is the last one. A better translation would read, And he shall be as a wild ass among men. His hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his brethren. Genesis 16:12, ASV. This wild man, or wild ass of a man, a crazy man, that could not get along with anyone because he had no control over himself or over his emotions. A violent, threatening man that was subject to fits of rage and given to murderous impulse. This man Ishmael would become the father of a vast multitude of people that would seem almost numberless. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Genesis 16:10. The nature of Ishmael has been passed down to his posterity. A revengeful people who take offense at the slightest perceived insult to themselves or their faith. The world has had an opportunity to view these people. A people that demand everything for themselves but give nothing in return. A people that mock the whole world as Ishmael mocked those around him. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the 
Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Genesis 21, 9. In the countries where these Ishmaelites live, there is no freedom. Everyone is controlled by fear. Brutality and murder are common events, as they are in many places in the world. But these acts of violence are sanctioned by the government and the people themselves. Many have blamed this behavior on their religion, but this does not hold true for all Muslims. Only the descendants of Ishmael seem to possess this demonic rage, a rage that seems bent on self-destruction, a suicidal rage, if that is what it will take to maim, cripple, mutilate, or kill the imagined adversary. We are taught it is wrong to stereotype a race, but the Apostle Paul had no problem doing just that in one of his epistles. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Titus 1, 12-13 How can you rebuke a Muslim or an Islamite without infuriating him? Because he perceives you as an infidel, and every criticism as against his faith, when it is really against his nature. I know that God made Ishmael for a purpose, and that purpose will be fulfilled in his offspring. Ishmael has become the curse of the whole world and not a blessing. Now let us finish this story. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abram, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abram, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abram's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abram arose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away, and she departed, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lift up her voice, and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation, 